stand with us and turn in your hymns to page 579. We will sing Shine, Jesus Shine. Welcome all of our visitors. It's a great crowd out tonight. Praise the Lord for that. Just a few announcements to get out of the way.
away when we got into the worship. Uh, just remember Wednesday night meeting, and then Thursday night we have prayer meeting here up front on Thursday night at 6 30. Remember that. Be praying for our school. It starts back this week. Pray for our teachers. And then uh, team kids all start to start back on Wednesday night. This coming Wednesday night we have a cookout. We need some workers for that. So if you'd like to uh, work in the team kids program, see somebody, we'll find you a place to work. Thank you very much. You will stand with me one more time, and this will be our offer again. <clears throat> Page 411. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. <laughs>
Thank you, Donna, so much. Uh, this is kindly turned into an impromptu youth service. Uh, we, uh, we didn't realize uh, what all was going to happen and kind of transgress. But uh, it, we have Madison Roark. She sang for us last night. And uh, I'm going to have her come and sing for you all this evening. Uh, we, we thoroughly enjoy Madison. And, and uh, she's, a, she's a joy in our youth group. So Madison, Mad Madison, come along to us.
these guys have certainly put a, a lot of work into this, and uh, they are they are great. And uh, I enjoy <coughs> watching them uh, learn something new. And, and you know, they they first watch it, and the first time they say, "Are you sure we can do this?" And, and uh, to see them grow in it and, uh, and able to do it after a month or two, and, and they just get it, and uh, it looks amazing. So uh, you guys be much in prayer for them as they. Uh, was heard at the tomb that day, just shuffling soldiers' feet as they guarded the grave. One day, two days, three days had passed. Could it be that Jesus breathed his last? Could it be that his father had forsaken him, turned his back on his son, despising our sin. All hell seemed to whisper, just forget him, he's dead. Then the father looked down to his son and said,
certainly enjoyed that. And uh, give him one more big hand. That was They did a marvelous job. Thank you all so much for being here with us. And, and uh, next up is is uh, a young man I have watched grow from from uh, sixth grade up. Uh, I've been privileged to be Adam's youth pastor for for several years, and uh, I love Adam. And uh, he he has been he's always been my buddy. And uh, Adam, you just come on up here tonight, and, and uh, if you're going to be praying for Adam, I just want you to say it again. Amen. Adam, everybody's going to be praying for you. Come on up here, buddy, and, and uh, we're going to be praying for you. And this is this is Adam's first message. And uh, you just remember where you were at, because I know God's going to use Adam, and I know God's going to bless you, and, and God's going to bless Adam tonight. So I'm going to get out of the way, and, and we love you, buddy, and we're praying for you. Amen. I appreciate uh, y'all, everybody coming out. Too many, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do my scripture because I may not. I got to wear glasses, so don't make fun of me. I'm going to go ahead and read what I've got uh, for my scripture, and then I'll go from there. It's if y'all want to turn your Bibles, it's uh, Matthew chapter eight, verses twenty-four through twenty-seven. Suddenly a violent storm arose on the sea and so that the boat was being swamped by waves. But he, was, but he was sleeping. So the disciples came and woke him up. Lord, save us. We are going to die. But he said to them, Why are you fearful? Are you of little faith? Then he got rebuked the winds and the seas. And there, there was a great calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? What, even the winds and the seas obey him. Even the winds and seas obeyed him. Ain't that something? I heard a song on the way home last night. I was riding home with Mark because we went to IHOP at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, it was, uh, it was called, I think it was called Change My Life. If he can rise, rise the dead, calm the seas, make the blind see, then he can change my life. And he can change yours. I don't need that. But, uh, this is what those verses mean to me. I, this is what I see. The disciples and Jesus go out on the sea just to fish and have fun, like Christians do. And suddenly, I'm, I'm assuming like a hurricane force winds just started hitting the boat, just hitting the boat, hitting the boat, hitting the boat, and they're just like, what do we do? Of course, back, back then they didn't have the boats we have today. They had little wooden boats that would sink very easily. So, winds and the rains are just hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. And they really think that they are going to die. So they run down to Jesus and like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's like, I'm assuming he woke up and went, as, as soon as he woke up, that's what he said. 
Why are you fearful? Are you men of little faith? And that made me think, are we men of little faith, men and women? I know sometimes my faith is very small. And just recently, it's grown bigger. And I'm so blessed to have everything that I have in my life and I take it all for granted. And we all do. And we, we need to thank God for what He's given us. Because without God, we wouldn't be here today. I believe the world is of little faith today. The, the, the violence, just everything that's going on in the world today, it's just, I just want to, I would think, what would happen if everybody just had a fifth of the faith that Jesus had? Just a small portion, not even the whole thing. Just a small portion. What kind of world would we live in? Brother would love brother. Sister would love sister. Neighbor would love neighbor. Just, that's hard to imagine, isn't it? That no matter where you go, you were loved. Because I know when I go out, there's people who hate me and hate me for what I stand for. And people are persecuting us just because we're Christians in the world we live in today. And that hurts. But he says that you're not going to face trials and tribulations because you will. I just, man, I just, the world we live in today. But I just think if we started loving each other like Jesus loved us, what kind of place the world will be in? And it all starts here at the church. If you can love the person you're sitting next to, you can start here. Where else will it go? You know? And I don't, and I know sometimes I'm the worst case of this, but when you, you come into church and you're a different person, and you can't really do that. You've got to be the same person inside these walls as you are on the outside of these walls. You can't come in here and say one thing and then do another. And sometimes I do that and, and I mess up every day. Just like we all do. <laughs> Man. Just to think about that. That Jesus loved me so much, so much, He sent and died for me. He came and died for me. He came and died for you. If you ever want to know who loves you, if you think no one loves you at all, if you think you're alone, you think you've got no one in this world, that's wrong. You've got Jesus. And He loves you. He does. And... I was thinking about that song, and he goes, and he says, Change my life, which hit home because I was just saved about a year ago for the first time, actually saved. I thought I was saved. We went to the mission trip for the first year, and I came back, really thought about my testimony. It's like, did I really accept Christ on that day? Did I really accept Him as my Lord and Savior? I looked down in my heart and it was no. I was saved at about 17 years old, being about to be 18. Which proves you're never old, too old to be saved. You don't have to be saved as a little child. You just got to be saved. He changed my life in a big way that day that everything has just fallen into place. And I've, ever since I've recently just turned it over my life over to God and decided to finally go into what he was trying to tell me for for since last year 
I've been fighting this for a long time. And when I, Brandon came to me and asked me, we went to the uh, mission trip this year at the beach. And he came to me and asked me, he goes, will you give a message on salvation? I was like, I thought about it. I, was like, I really didn't want to. But I was like, I can't tell Brandon no. So I was like, okay, I'll give my message on salvation. And I gave it to the boys. And this little boy, I'll never remember, he came, up to, he came and specifically talked to me and my friend Logan. And he said, I don't know if I'm truly saved, but I feel like I am. I just feel like that I keep messing up and messing up and messing up, and I don't know what to do. I said, you just got to ask for forgiveness, buddy. And you don't only just ask for forgiveness and then go do it again. Because that's not how it works. You don't just ask for forgiveness and do the same thing on purpose. You ask for forgiveness and try to change that time you ask for forgiveness. It changed my life. He changed mine. And He can change yours, no matter what you're going through. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to go ahead and give this kind of message about salvation, but it's just been laid on my heart. I'm going to give you kind of a message that I gave the kids over at Sea Palms. Because halfway through my lesson, I finished my lesson with the boys and walked to the girls. And God laid a different message on my heart. I opened my Bible... I had a bunch of scripture I was just going to quote and then pray with them. He said, close your Bible and speak from the heart. And I did. And I believe two girls came to Christ and we had three rededications that night, if, I'm, if that's the number that's right. I have words that are very important to me that mean a lot to my heart. And those words are, my past is history and my future is destiny. And people was like, what does that mean? I'm like, well, my past may have not been the best. And no matter what you've done, where you came from, who, what your name is, if you turn it over to God, your future is destiny to go to heaven. If you get saved tonight, your past does not matter. Your future is destiny. God loves you so much. He sent His only Son, His only Son, to die for you, for every single person in this room tonight. And I'm not worthy of His grace, but He gives it to me anyway. That being said, here in a minute I'm going to give y'all an opportunity if y'all do not feel like you are saved or you are where you need to be with Christ. This altar's been open the entire time. But I'm going to give y'all an opportunity and a chance to come down and either pray or turn it over to the Lord or give your life to Christ. And please take it seriously. Don't, this is a time of seriousness. And if, Matt, if Brandon will come and get a, uh, any song, uh, the altar's open now. If anybody needs to come down and pray, I'll pray with you. If anybody needs to come over and turn their life to Christ tonight, please don't leave here. Please do not leave here without making the decision that you feel like you need to make. I know that one thing that makes me happy is I know one day I'll go to heaven. Because I just recently lost my grandmother. She just left about two months ago. And I loved her so much. 
I would do anything for her. She got real sick and then passed away. I know where she's at tonight. She's looking down on me and she's smiling. The only thing that makes me feel better and helps me sleep at night is to know one day I'll get to see her again. Go ahead, Brandon. Somebody else just real quickly. Well, I don't care if it's quick. I'm getting to take all night. Amen. And you got.
got a word on your heart. You got if you got something you want to pray about. You just you just let me know. Yeah. 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 Aren't you glad Jesus saved Oh, Lord, 
Christ and describe the wonderful works of God before them. Lord, I pray you bless our church ever. Use them. Lord, we ask you, Father, that you continue to bless here. Oh, God, we can't thank you enough. Lord, we just want to get out of the way. Lord Jesus, let the Holy Spirit guide us and direct us in the days to come. Oh, Father, thank you for our youth. Thank you, Lord, for the dedication for Christy. Lord, the way she leads our community for Brandon, the Lord, and the way we desire the Lord to lead the youth, Father, to tell about Jesus. Lord, for our friends, we love that they've been so dear friends for all the years. Lord, we came to hear uh, tonight, Lord Jesus, and as he uh, preached the gospel for the very first time, pray you bless him, O oh Lord. God, and oh Father, direct him to the days to come, O oh Lord, we pray now. Father, as we go on our way, we not forget, O oh Lord, we've been able to say that we've been in the house of God. So now, Lord, I pray that you continue Amen. to work and to bless the people, Father. Oh, Lord Jesus, I know, Father, I need you. I need you every hour. I need you, Lord, and I pray. Father, as we go to and from, Lord, around this community, Lord Jesus, I pray that this place would be a city set on the hill. Lord Jesus, whenever we can come with folks see us, uh, they be able to hear those words. Jesus said that, uh, that we ought to lay our lives so shine before me. And let me see our good works and glorify the Father uh, which is in heaven. Oh, Lord, we know, Father, what you're going to do for us. If we'll just go out by faith, Lord, whenever Adam said that, I thought, Lord, it's time for the church and to step out in faith. Oh, Lord, I know I can't see with my eyes, touch you physically with my hands, or hear you out with my ears, but praise be unto God. You said, if I go away, I'll see you a comforter. Oh, God, thank you for the Holy Spirit that guides me and directs me, blesses me, uses me, and helps me through every place of life. Now, Lord Jesus, as we fellowship together, may you get the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.